Good morning and welcome to Cooley Off-Road. I am your host Brandon Scott and with me as normal is Nash getting himself ready over there. And today on this gorgeous Father's Day Sunday we are in Mount Rainier National Park just outside of Longmire going to do a section of the Wonderland Trail from Longmire to about Devil's Dream uh, backcountry camp on the way to Indian Henry's hunting ground. And then we're going to bail off trail and go scout out some potential waterfall positions for later in the summer because the waterfalls themselves are probably still snowed in, but we're just checking out the feasibility of whether or not we can get to them and how long we might take to get to them. So thank you for joining us on Free Adventure, and let's go have some fun. All right, so we're on the Wonderland Trail about five, ten minutes after leaving the trailhead just outside of Longmire, and we're just cruising through the nice quiet forest. Every once in a while there's a little bit of bird song, Otherwise, it's just quiet, peaceful forest walking. Eventually, we have to go up and over those basalt cliffs up there, which is known as Rampart Ridge, and the cliffs specifically are known as the Ramparts. There's a low-ish spot up here that we'll have to go up and over. And then drop back down the other side into the Couts Creek drainage. got noticeably cooler dropping down into the swamp here. Mm -hmm. Bridge can you uh, seems like they do it one at a time as it needs it, but I think I like I kind of like the half rotten logs. It adds a little bit of ambiance, and they're quieter too. All right, so we've made it pretty much to the top of Rampart Ridge. And if you can read these signs, we're at the intersection of the Wonderland Trail with the Van Trump Park Trail. It's been two miles from the trailhead we started at. We've got about another two miles to go on the Wonderland Trail. And then Van Trump Park Trail stays along top of the uh, Rampart Ridge going behind me. Heads to Mildred Point, Van Trump Park, Comet Falls, and back down to the road. Well, we're on the back side of Rampart Ridge heading down towards Cowts Creek and what do you know, there's still some snow on the trail. Welcome to late spring, early summer hiking in the Cascade Mountains. We're probably around... Is it summer today? Huh? Is it the first day of summer today or tomorrow? Is it, today's the 20th? Is it so the tomorrow. 22nd or the 21st? Tomorrow. First day of summer is tomorrow, but summer don't mean cheat in the mountains. Cascade Mountains, 4,000 or so feet of elevation, and this part of the trail obviously doesn't get much sun because there's still a bunch of snow on it. But I mean it's patchy and it's easy to follow. See there's an open patch right here. Just makes it that much more exciting. And at some point we're supposed to be dropping downhill into the creek but you seem to still be going flat or up. 
<sighs> Pause a few seconds so you don't have to stare at Nash's butt the whole time. I'm right here. Alright, so we've made it down to Couts Creek. And we'll get a big reveal of the mountain here momentarily. So come dropping down into the Scourge floodplain of Couts Creek. And then, oh look, there's a mountain up there. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, you can see the power of these glacially carved rivers. The creek is down there somewhere in the cottonwood thicket. But it's got so much power when it's in full melt that the cliffs are way the heck up there, full close to 100 feet above. And it's these U-shaped bowls, because not too long ago Oh, a couple hundred to a couple thousand years ago, I'm sure the Cowitz Glacier was all the way down here. But it's now all the way up there. And waterfalls we're going to go look for. There's one up, there's a couple in the drainages up here. And eventually we're going to try and walk upstream that direction a mile or so to go find another entrance to a waterfall way up there. But that might not happen due to snow. But, we'll see. For now, enjoy this gorgeous view of the mountain. Alright, so we're on the other side of Couch Creek now, coming out of the drainage on this side. And, we're gonna have some birthday chocolates. It's not my birthday, it's not. Nash's birthday, it's Father's Day, but we were supposed to shave these chocolates when we were on top of Ross Dam for Nash's birthday a month ago. But of course, us in our infinite wisdom completely forgot about the chocolates. So now we're eating them now. And all of YouTube can learn about our silly mistake. Mmm, this episode of Coolie Off Road brought to you by Ghirardelli Chocolates, Milk Chocolate Caramel. You gotta love it. Shamelessly stealing Nick's lines again. Oh, you just got it. I stole Nick's lines again. Will he be mad? I highly doubt it. Next thing you know, you're getting sued. Mm. <laughs> I mean, he might get mad at me if I start doing Vinman's bakery every video like he does. <laughs> but I'm told him. I highly doubt he'll care. He'll probably get a chuckle out of it, actually. Yeah, so. We're taking a chocolate break. Staring at Rainier along Couts Creek. Real fun is probably about to begin, because when we get to the Pyramid Creek backcountry camp, we'll probably stop and have actual lunch there. And then game plan from there. Because there's a couple waterfalls that direction. And the real crux of the day is seeing if we can go upstream. But we'll see if that even happens. Right now we're just enjoying our chocolate in the shade because it's hot out. Alright, so here we are at um, Pearl Creek. A little bit bigger, a little bit cloudier than Couch Creek. This is also where we had lunch. There's my pack. There's the bridge over there. Nash just crossed, and he's now walking over there. We're gonna cross that bridge here momentarily. But also on the shore lunch spot, probably at the end of the day when we come back over, we're gonna swim in that pool there. That just looks too inviting to not to, and it's hot out. You can see the other phone set up there. It took a 25 or so minute long exposure. That'll be up on the YouTube. If you like those long exposures, go watch them, give them a like. It really helps with the algorithm. Give the page a like, give a subscribe. Let me know how we're doing. But yeah, we're gonna put the pack on. Gonna cross this bridge real quick so you can see what it's like to cross a uh, log bridge over a glacial river that usually has to be replaced every couple years. When we get a little further down, you'll see old bridges down there that are now buried in sedimentation because there's just so much stuff coming down. 
But yeah, this is where we had lunch. The mountains there, two waterfalls that direction, one waterfall along the trail that direction, and that's probably all we're gonna get to today. But it looks like it should be feasible to walk up on one side or the other of this drainage, probably on that side of the drainage, and duck into the forest every once in a while and just walk up the creek a mile and a half to where the waterfalls are, the big ones are. But that'll come in a couple weeks. So I'll put the other phone away, put the phone and the tripod away, put the pack on, grab my hiking stick, and we'll go across the bridge and meet up with Nash. a lot lighter already eat my lunch and most of my water bottles most of one of my water bottles but that's a beautiful pool and yes it's a fast gla fast glacial fed river but i'll talk about it more later when we actually go for some but we will be safe we'll have our shoes no we're not going to go in the middle of the frost and try to jump off the pool we're just going to hop in there either on that side or that side and just get wet and cool off and dry off in the sun on our way back to rex got the hiking stick both phones are in pocket GoPro's there, chapstick is there, car keys are there, hiking sticks in my hands. All right, let's go across the bridge. A little different than when we were up at the Carbon a couple weeks ago. Obviously, the Carbon needed three or four much bigger log bridges to cross it because it's a full-size river instead of a creek. And it was 55 degrees and raining. Whereas today, it's a pleasant, if a little warm for this true Seattleite, a nice pleasant 70 degrees. 70-ish. Take a couple of pictures. Such pretty scenery. And let's go across this log bridge. And yes, if you thought uh, I left my sunglasses over there somewhere. So let's go back and get my sunglasses. Probably be a good idea, huh? Oh, it's always something with me. You know, at least I remember them now and not two hours later somewhere along the trail somewhere and go, oh, I don't have my sunglasses. Durr. Now the trick is to find them. Huh. If I remember right, we first set our packs down over there. So it might be over there. But like I was attempting to say, yep, there they are. I see them on the ground. But like I was saying, if you think that bridge looks pretty pretty fresh that's because it is that bridge was only put in by the trail crew two weeks ago three weeks ago somewhere around there because before it was down there but when we go back past it you'll see it's kind of buried now so they had to put in a new one which is this one and this is an ongoing process every couple of years these bridges only last couple of years at most sometimes they don't even last the full season they have to replace one or more times in a season goodness gracious look at that ain't that ready huh that's what me likes that's what me likes a lot but yeah these bridges don't have a very long lifespan sometimes they'll last three years sometimes they'll last five years sometimes they'll last a month and a half like there is a bridge, a log bridge like that across the Nisqually River over at Cougar Rock Campground just on the other side of the bridge line we went over from here. Uh, the Carter Falls Trail. Pretty easy mile and a half hike one way. See a nice, a pretty nice waterfall. And that bridge has to be replaced each year because in the November rainy season, flood season, 
the Squally River comes through and just rips it out. And it's very common for these rivers and creeks to just completely destroy bridges. I mean, how is a little dinky log bridge going to survive against rivers that can do this scale of destruction year in and year out? But tis the sacrifices we make. So you can see there's two old bridges there. One has lost its railing or one has probably had its railing stolen from it. The other one still has its railing there. That was the old most recent one. And you can see it's pretty much completely underwater. So if you want you go across it now, you could theoretically probably for another year or two, you just have to put your toe shoes on there, risk getting wet. Yeah, now we're gonna go up the trail a little ways before ducking off trail and we're gonna go find ourselves some waterfalls. Stay tuned, ladies and gents. So, best as I can tell, this is Fisher's Hornpipe Falls. We're off trail by a couple hundred feet and it's there and it goes down and it continues down and it goes down that way. So waterfall the stretch is more of a big steep series of cascades with a bunch of steps in it. I mean it's pretty but calling it a waterfall is a stretch. Now this is one of the few waterfalls I have come out and found and looked at that I truly don't think is worth coming to. I mean, yeah, we could have stayed down at Pearl Creek and just hung out, but we wanted to come up here and put the extra effort to come up here. And I don't think that was worth it seeing this. I mean, it's pretty, but I don't think it's worth it. Now, if you're walking along the Wonderland Trail and going up to Devil's Dream Camp, which is another mile or two up the trail, this would be a decent stopover, especially where the trail crosses the bridge up the creek in other ways. But I think this is the falls. And on its own, I don't think it's worth it to come to because we had to burn some butt doing some thigh masters for about a half a mile to get up here. And then a pretty steep, tricky traverse into this ravine off trail for a couple hundred feet to see this. I don't think this is necessarily worth it just on its own. But if you're going along the stream, you can see Nash doing something stupid. But if you're going along the trail anyway, and you're passing this anyway, yeah, it's worth to drop your pack along the trail in the 20 to 30 minute detour to come check this out. Yeah, this is Fisher's, so this is Fisher's Hornpipe Falls. We'll be next up, we'll be heading back down to the bridge and we'll be walking downstream on the west side of the creek about a third of a mile to go try and find another fall before we go swimming. All right, update. I was way down there. It didn't look that impressive, but Nash came up here to get closer. So I came over to him and yeah, this does look more impressive. That looks to be about a 12 or 15 foot drop. It's definitely more impressive. And there's a secondary little drop there. I thought this was all just one little swoopy sloopy. And I'm pretty sure we're closer to the trail anyway. If we go straight up that way, we came from way over there. The long traverse, if we go straight up that way, I bet we'll hit the trail in 80 feet. Because the trail's supposed to cross over on a bridge not too far up from here. So I'm updating my uh, assessment. Yeah, this is definitely worth coming to and hanging out at. A little bit hard to get to because there's some snow patches. But definitely would, would worth be a snow break or a lunch break along your way up between Pyramid Camp and Devil's Dream Camp. Yeah, this is actually Fisher's Horn Pipe Falls. I'm pretty sure of it now. And yeah, I'd say it's worth it. Nash is flinging snow. He's gonna go try and get on top of it. We'll see how it goes. Big old fat bumblebee. Now that my heart rate is calmed down and my thighs and calves aren't screaming at me, I enjoy it. I'm enjoying this a lot more, but that initial traverse over after coming up the trail was a pain. So 
I didn't think it was initially worth it. Now, yeah, I'd say this is worth it. It's definitely a good look at Lou at. We got two more waterfalls to look at, and it's almost one o'clock. Probably get back down to the bridge. One fifteen-ish or so. Hopefully, go find those other two waterfalls and be back to swimming by two o'clock, which will give us plenty of time to hump it out. Yeah, this is definitely worth it. There he is. You might not be able to pick him out too well. He's like there. Yes. Turn to get to the edge of the brink. We'll see if we'll see him. I think there's just going to be too much vegetation in the way though. So I keep checking my phone to make sure I'm A, centered on the waterfall. And B, on the phone it looks really washed out. Did that with the North Cascade. You remember me talking about the mountain being really washed out. Well, that was washed out looking on the phone. So hopefully it comes out a little better on YouTube and on the actual TV stream. On this little phone, everything looks fuzzy and washed out. So hopefully it looks better. We're back down at Pearl Creek. Dumped our packs up there at the trail. We've walked down this floodplain about a quarter of a mile. Now we've run into Fisher's Hornpipe. We've got Fisher's Hornpipe Creek on one side, Pearl Creek on the other side. And I think I see some dropping water down there, which I think is gonna be Devil's Dream Creek, which is where we're headed. So there's supposed to be a couple waterfalls up that creek. So now, as we're cruising along through this, gotta find a way to cross Fisher's Hornpipe. So I think, those bits of falling water in there are Devil's Dream Creek, which is where we're wanting to end up. There should be a waterfall right, pretty much right there. So now we're on the hunt and we did pack our toe shoes. So got them hanging out of my hip. So we will put, be able to put those on if need be, but we're looking for a spot to cross. It looks like we might be crossing right there underneath that down log and going that way so if you are a novice off trail exploration person i advise you not to do this but one of the many many parent things my parents did taking me outside was for my birthday in november we always got to the ocean beaches and the ocean beaches have jetties for every harbor so half the Ooh, that's a that's tippy. Hmm, that's hmm. I want off this. Anyway, as I was saying, we go jetty walking, which is pretty much just big chunks of boulders like this. I've got lots of experience doing this. Still not fun. It's still exciting and stressful, but I at least know what I'm looking for. So. Looks like, I think, so that's Pearl. This is Fisher's Hornpipe. Methinks the best spot's gonna be like somewhere in here, toe shoes and go up, up there in the calmer spot, yeah. All right, we're gonna put our toe shoes on and cross. Hopefully the next video will be at the waterfall. Ladies and gentlemen, we successfully crossed the creek, had to bushwhack a, I don't know, 50 or 60 feet because the Pearl Creek cliffed us out. And when we popped out, look what we found. Master scale, almost dies. So this is waterfall number four on this creek according to the website. And the trail we were on early today up at Fisher's Hornpipe Falls 
We're gonna continue up the trail. Eventually it crosses this creek too. So between the top of the trail and here, there's three more waterfalls. That might be a day trip in itself. But this is Devil's Dream Creek. And I think because of the way the waterfall looks, I'm gonna call it Devil's Ladder. Cause it looks like a very chunky step, 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 or I might call it Devil's Stairway. I haven't decided yet. But it's from the bottom down here, all the way up to the top up there. Probably 60, 70 foot, pretty good. And it's gorgeous. And for reference, Pearl is right there. You got one more drop right there, another five foot drop into the river. And then Pearl goes down with Cout and eventually meets up with Cout. But this is our final stop for the day.
really you do. Oh, that's really tough. Well, that'll do it for today's Mount Rainier adventure. I think the grand totals came out to just over 5,000 calories burned. Somewhere around 9 miles total hiking, which most of it was on trail, but some of it was off trail. And two waterfalls and a glorious, glorious swimming hole. Yes, we were excited. Yes, we are tired. Yes, I'm a little toasted. But it was a damn good Sunday. Everyone have a good one. Please give a like and a share down below. Have a good afternoon. Have a good evening. Have a good work week. And ciao.